Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, not only a restaurant reviewer, uh, but an expert in wines. Mm -hmm. Speaking of wines, you... There's been a day that's gone by, I haven't had wine. Speaking speaking of wines, you write a lot about wines, and you've written about what I consider to be the Rodney Dangerfield of... Wines, Riesling, is that correct? Pronounce it Riesling. Uh, how come that sort of like gets short shrift here, at least in America? No, 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 no respect. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any real good reason for it because once in the East, specifically Eastern United States, um, they made a lot of Riesling, um, but they had all these other native grapes, uh, Niagara and Canagra and so forth, that people were drinking here. But once the big wine boom took off in the United States, the Californians tried their hand at it. The problem is that traditionally, yeah. Rieslings were made to be sweet. And that's not that they added a, 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 a speck of sugar to it. The way the wines were made was they had a good sugar content, which gets fermented into alcohol. And you can make it either dry if you use up all the sugar for alcohol, or you can have what's called residual sugar. And the Germans uh, were the ones who made these wines, uh, which were generally fairly sweet. <clears throat> but the sweeter and sweeter ones were much more difficult to make, much more difficult to find, and were only made sometimes in certain years. Um, and they were considered like a sauterne. A Chateau de Chem, uh, in France, the, the great, if you like a dessert wine, uh, these are intensely sweet, but they're not intensely sweet like, uh, you know, Boone's Apple Farm or something. They're, uh, they're almost licorice. They're almost like drinking a liqueur or a cordial, and they're delicious, but they have a nice backbone of acid. Well, the popularity of wine <clears throat> that really exploded in the 1970 and 1980s worldwide did not favor that type of wine. And consequently, um, when you hear the word Riesling, that's what a lot of people think of. I don't like, I don't like sweet wines, I like dry wines. Well, the Germans and the people of Alsace, which is in France for the moment, was used to be German, and in Austria, they said, how are we going to battle? We got the whole country's planted with bloody Riesling. Um, so what they did was to um, not push the sweet wines, or even the medium sweet wines, they came up with which was called Trocken, T-R-O-C-K-E-N, which were dry Rieslings and were much more easy to drink with food. Think of like, you know, a grilled trout with a dry Riesling, okay? Um, and they are delicious wines. The best of them, I think, were not only come from the Rhine Valley uh, in Germany, um, and uh, first, of all, first of all, the first Trocken wines were terrible. I mean, they just well, absolutely awful. They were green and, and acidic and so forth, but they've got their balance. So the best ones come out of the Rhine, and <clears throat> equally as good are those which have uh, a little more intensity to them are the ones that come out of Alsace uh, in, in France, as I said. Uh, so those are the place, and, and Austria, too, a uh, third, I would put them. Well. Californians being what they are, have to make every single kind of wine there is. So there are a lot of Johannesburg Rieslings that are generally called out there, uh, which is the same grape uh, or Riesling. More and more they're putting on the label just Riesling. And those are made in the drier style too. Um, I'm fond of some of them, not many of them. But in uh, Oregon and Washington, Washington specifically, there's some very, very nice Rieslings coming out of Chateau Saint-Michel and, um, and other wineries there. But the best American Rieslings by far come out of the Finger Lakes in New York State. Um, they have, uh, there is one, uh, one label, which is Dr. Constantine Frank, and he's been at it long before anything I've been talking about here in terms of the move to Trocken. Um, he's been making uh, strikingly good Rieslings that are balanced, that have um, an underpinning of sweetness perhaps, or he might make a sweeter Riesling if that's what you prefer. 
but the uh, the grapes uh, there in the Finger Lakes are just perfect, um, and they grow uh, to have a good amount of acid as well as a good amount of sugar. Now, also, both in the Finger Lakes and in Canada, as well as in Germany, they make what is called ice wine. And ice wine in German is called E-I-S wine. Uh, uh, here we call it ice, I-C-E, wine. Uh, ice wine is made from grapes that have been allowed to freeze on the vine. In other words, all the other grapes get picked November by November, and they're all put into various wine, wineries and made into, into wine and they ferment. These are allowed to um, uh, freeze on the vine. What that does is to intensify the grape I mean, really like that. I mean, if, if this is if this is a a, a grape, uh, when the, during the harvest they may shrink like that to make a a sweet wine, but these things are like this, and they're intense with sugar. And what you get out of those in terms of liquid is very little. So um, ice wines are almost always sold in small bottles, uh, not seven hundred fifty. Uh, 0750 liter uh, bottle, which is most wines, but in uh, half bottles, because nobody could sit down and drink this with a Caesar salad or, or, or a steak. <clears throat> what you save your ice wines for is that uh, special moment for the flat fire. Um, they go they go well with dessert, or they go well as dessert. So if you have a pear or a peach. Um, and a couple of hazelnuts and uh, an ice wine, uh, you're going to drink some of the most delicious wines in the world. So Rieslings are making a small comeback um, from what they once were because they weren't very good wines, but now they are. And again, look in Germany, uh, Alsace, Austria, the Finger Lakes, Canada for the ice wines. And if you haven't had them in a long time, you will be amazed and they will no longer be the Rodney Dangerfields of the wine world. John, um, given the fact that the ice wine is is unique, are the Trockens and uh, the sweeter wines, are they labeled that way? How do we recognize Oh, yeah. Them? Yeah. Uh, they, as a matter of fact, they start off with Trocken or Halb Trocken, which is half Trocken. Mm. Then they go to Spätlaser which can also be made dry. I'm not getting into the intricacies of that, but the spate laser is, has a nice pale sweetness. Ausch laser mm. is sweeter yet. And then Bernaus laser is quite sweet. And Trocken Bernaus laser is almost as sweet as ice wine. Um, okay. It did not help with the Germans um, because they have these crazy long names, you know? I mean, who's sure. going to... Go into the store. You only took and better than our laser. Yeah, it's um, so it is probably, but yeah, they, there are degrees of sweetness. That's oh, I should mention Tokai, which is not made from Riesling, but that's a Hungarian wine. And Tokai is made from the Tokai grapes, and that can get intensely, intensely sweet, but always with that backbone of acid to make it refreshing, refreshing, not cloying. Hmm. Good information. I, I remember having Riesling. Many, many, many years ago, which is why I'm a red wine guy today. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for um, giving um, Riesling a little bit more respect than uh, uh, it's had in the past. And uh, if you want to know anything about wine, johnmariani.com, home of the Virtual Gourmet Newsletter. And it's filled with not only tons of interesting food facts, but all of his novels in one form yep. or another have appeared there, or at least the recent ones, and they're amazing. So johnmariani.com, go visit, go enjoy. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.